Well, hello once again. Welcome to what nobody told me after 65. It is your lady on the go, lady in the know, Miss Info. This is the Information Nation, where knowledge is shared and wisdom exchanged for the betterment of a people. Today, I want to talk to you about Mickey's, and I don't mean Mickey Mouse. The relationship between McDonald's and us folk. During the riot in or the uprising in Ferguson, Missouri, um, the tragedy of the shooting death of uh, Michael Brown Jr., the one place that represented Ferguson in the public eye was the McDonald's restaurant. It was located at 913 West Florissant. 913 West Florissant, I guess it's street. And it best symbolized the love-hate relationship between racial justice and the marketplace in America, past and present. McDonald's represented a safe place. Most of the time we could send our kids there after school. They could get a sandwich cheap. Um, the brothers was hanging out in the parking lots. Not just the brothers, the corner boys, hanging out in the parking lots, doing what they do. But our children were pretty much safe. They could go inside and sit. The managers never complained. Most of these franchises were in the hood, and they were owned by black Americans, male and female. But there was only a handful of them. Wasn't that many. The first black franchise owner was in 1968, and his name was Herman Petty. He was the first. He also organized the NBMOA, the National Black McDonald's Operators Association, in 1972. So he opened in 1968, 69, 70, 70. Four years later, he saw a need that had to be filled by getting his folk together because there was some unfair treatment going on. By 1980, McDonald's was deeply embedded in the hood. They led the way into developing franchises of color, but equity and fairness were questionable, both inside and outside the corporate structure. Local issues, legal issues arose surrounding the accusation that black franchises were assigned to unstable neighborhoods that yielded high profits but required high overhead. So you either breaking even or you're not making nothing. It is not happenstance that fast food restaurants are hyper concentrated in the poorest and most racially segregated places in the hood. It's racially segregated places in the cities and then it ends up being oversaturated in the hood. Let's, let's make that distinction. Due to this saturation, in black America, fast food, specifically McDonald's, is often identified as the culprit for the high rates of obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Researchers had warned in the past that a black child born in the year 2000 had a 53% chance of developing type 2 diabetes. Whereas the likelihood of a white child developing type 2 diabetes under the same circumstances was less than 30%. The familiar narrative is fast food is popular in our communities because it's, what? Cheap. 
and there aren't other many other food options. Well, that may not be true. Young mothers strapped with jobs and two or three jobs and poor wages, they are most likely to send their kid with $2 to McDonald's. They get a hamburger and french fries, drink some water. $2, hamburger and french fries. You could feed all five of your kids. 10 bucks. Where else could you do that? Couldn't do that at the grocery store. Even though we know mature adults, thinking adults, folks who know that this food is chemically engineered, chemically engineered to go further, to cook faster, to taste a certain way. And we assume it's probably just the tip of the iceberg. If we keep digging, we probably going to find some other things. Remember when they said chicken nuggets was made out of uh, cow, I mean, um, dog or all the rumors that were floating around. But Ray Kroc, who started that great franchise, he was a businessman. And he was about making money. Yeah, he wanted it to taste okay, but he needed your money. That's That was the bottom line. In the 60s and 70s, there were no parks. There were no community centers. Now, some of you may not remember that. Outside, we sat on the steps, on the stoop, and hung on the corners. Eventually, the fast food parking lot became the hangout, if it was in the hood. On the outskirts, not so much. But in the hood, our kids could go in there and get something cheap to eat. Uh, we find our brothers, our boyfriends, our men out in the parking lot hustling. Um, junkies out there nodding or in the McDonald's bathroom, Nate and OD. That was the reality. But overall, it was a safe place. I ain't remember people getting shot or killed uh, in the McDonald's. Uh, not of late, you can't say that. But back in the day, they weren't getting shot and killed at McDonald's. And rarely did you find a police officer in McDonald's unless he was in there getting some food. Today... Pretty much in the hood, a police officer is stationed somewhere either in there or in the vicinity. Now, without the black market base, McDonald's would have slowed way down in the 70s. That was when the, um, what do you want to call it? They didn't call it the Depression. They called it uh, the Recession. I was during the recession period. Slowed way down. But we kept it going. Because, remember, recession, we didn't have much money. We are spending our money the best and stretching it the best way we knew how. So, that same slowdown, that same decline was happening in other franchises, in other brands, uh, like... Um, Burger King um, and and uh, Mrs. Winners and KFC and some of these other places that were really out of our reach. They they didn't have uh, one piece of chicken that you could buy. I don't even think you could have bought individual pieces of chicken back in the day. It was always in a package, a box, or whatever, and that was out of our reach. But McDonald's, one dollar. Remember the dollar menu? Mm. One dollar to eat that food that was killing us. So, slowed down for McDonald's, but practically choked the other uh, brands out of business. That was the beginning of culture and segmenting marketing. And recognizing the cross appeal 
of celebrity icons in our community. And we started seeing basketball players talking about they having a cheeseburger, they having a shake. We started seeing celebrities, local celebrities. We started seeing a lot of our people or people that looks like us on these commercials, pushing these burgers, pushing these uh, not so happy meals. I can remember almost every McDonald's commercial from my childhood up until the time I started having children in the 80s. The first commercial I remember seeing Ronald McDonald, he had a square box on his head. <laughs> it was so dumb and primitive. And a, a cup, a drink cup on his uh, for his nose. And he was dumb looking. And I don't even remember what he was talking about. But he had a box hat, like a tray, a server tray, and this uh, cold drink cup on his nose. Held on with a, like a rubber band or something. In 1965, that's when we first see the red hair with the big red mouth. I said, McDonald's is your kind of place. In 67, McDonald's is our kind of place. It was a song. McDonald's is your kind of place. That happy, happy place. Whatever, whatever. McDonald's is your kind of place. Your kind of place. Okay. That's enough of that. In 1968, hamburger. Uh, the hamburger was being touted as, come and get this hamburger. I think it was what? 69 cent, 59 cent, and you don't have to dress up, and still your kind of place, but everybody in that commercial was white, everybody. In 1971, the big meal was introduced, and you deserve a break today. Get this great big giant meal that's going to choke you, choke your arteries, you know, and, and eat more of it because it's big and, and for $5 or whatever it was at the time, um, you could be certain that you could uh, have a heart attack by the time you were 30 years old. And yeah, I think that there was a documentary or a movie done about Super Size Me. You need to check that out. In 1975, remember this? Two all-beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. We were saying it like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Remember that? <laughs> they came out with that in 1975. Everybody was saying it and started buying, what? The two all-beef patties. That's a, a sell, a sell-up. An upcharge, if you will. In 1979, the Happy Meal was introduced. In 1980, there was the first time you saw a little black girl on the commercial. In 1982, a black guy is actually singing a song. He's one of the uh, cooks in the back. You know, they wore the, the uh, tent hats, you know, the little pyramid hats. It was a black guy, and they let him actually sing. He opened his mouth and was singing. In 1983, they brought Ronald McDonald back. Now, he was introduced in 65 with that red hair and the big red mouth, but it didn't seem to be working. So all from 1967 until 1982, it was people, everyday, ordinary people talking about McDonald's. But in 1983, they brought Ronald McDonald back along with the Hamburglar and, and, the, and, the, and the French Fry thing and, and all those other icons. They brought him back. In 1988, the Moon Man, because then they were open late night. Why'd they do that? Because they knew in our community, we're out at the club. We're coming back. We're getting chicken wings and whatever we could get. But once they closed, there wasn't anything else to eat. Ah, go through the drive-thru at McDonald's. And that 
what was he, Mac the Knife or Mac the Moon? Anyway, it was a big moon head man singing at a piano. And in that commercial, you see a black woman shown full face for the first time. As well as I can remember, any time that the corporate marketing advertising machine wanted us to buy anything, they pushed out our celebrities and our vices. Sneakers, cologne, fancy cars, um, music, dancing. Before cigarettes came off, Newports and Cools. And in those commercials, all you saw were black folks. Now, yes, the market segment, they were smart. If it was in the hood market, you saw black folk, folk that looked like you. If it was in suburbia, um, they saw people that looked like them. Make no mistake about it. We weren't playing in um, Mary Lou's uh, suburban home. No, we weren't. When she looked at her commercial, it looked completely different from mine. The music was the same. The food was the same. The push was the same. But the people weren't the same. Anything that appealed to us, they were there. McDonald's. Other franchise marketers um, also. But McDonald's, for the most part, because they were one of the ones that were around every time we had a major upset. Um, the franchise owners were typically or usually black in those communities where the violence or where the action was happening. And McDonald's expected, even if it wasn't a written directive, they expected the franchise owners to keep the peace, to help make peace, to make them look good. And McDonald's has always been charitable to a fault. It just makes sense. We're in your neighborhood we want to stay in your neighborhood. Let's be friends. But as I mentioned, the black franchise owner was despairingly um, separated from the white franchise owner. In 2008, they had 304 black-owned franchise owners. In 2017, there was less than 250. In 2021, an article that was written in Restaurant Business Online reported financial inequity, inequality still exists. In 2021, there's only about 186 black-owned franchises in McDonald's, and that's pitiful. This year, they promised to invest $500 million into black franchises and take an increased overview and oversight in their DEI initiative. That's the new buzzword, diversity, equity, and inclusion. All I can say is, where's the beef? Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Wrong brand. <laughs> Listen. Pay attention to what they feeding you. Mm -hmm. Everything that glitters is not gold. You got to stop eating that fast food. It is definitely not good for us. One of the things we know is that the chemicals in it are changing the way our bodies respond. I've seen nine-year-old girls in the hood with more endowed assets than I ever had, even when I was pregnant. <laughs> it is the chemicals that they use, that if they use chemicals to grow plants faster, to make the meat grow quicker, what will those same chemicals do to a young body? It's going to enhance it, just like it does with the cow. We make more meat by enhancing the product that we're feeding them. Pay attention. It just goes to show that we have been walking around with our eyes wide shut. 
it's not a good thing. If you find this information helpful, please share. Talk to somebody about it. Conversation is good. McDonald's is not the only one either. I don't want to make it seem like I'm picking on them. But they had made it very easy for the black person to get into the franchise business and then treated them rather poorly. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. Please subscribe, share, like, hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload new content. I have promised to do it every day. There is no, um, there is nothing new under the sun and there is plenty to talk about. But I always like to hear from you. If you have a topic suggestion, please put it in the comments section and remember, you don't know what you don't know. Take care.